Hi, my name is Sun, and in this video, I want to go over this tentacle rig that I posted on Twitter a while back, and I got a lot of questions from people asking me how I set it up. So to start with, I'm just going to slowly play back the animation so you can see what it's all about. At the first frame, you'll see we have a tentacle that looks like it's gripping something, and as I scrub the timeline here, the tentacle curls up, then uncurls, stretches out, and then grip something else. Now, if I show all the bones, you can see I have all these green bones and I have a curl bone here. But if I go further up the timeline, you can see I also have these orange bones. And the rig is set up so I can blend between having it the tentacle controlled by the green bones and the orange bones or being controlled by the path or the curl bone. And if I go into setup mode, I'll show you how it's set up. So first we have all the green bones, which are constrained to a path, which is this path here. And we have the path called path CNS here, path constraint. And if I change the position, see the green bones now move along the path. Let me undo that. The second constraint we have is a transform constraint that I named curl. And this allows me to rotate a single bone to have all of these orange bones also rotate. And if we look here under options, we have this local option set. And what this does is it applies the rotation from this target bone, you see the targets curl, to the local uh, transform of, of each of the orange bone. For example, if I set the rotation to 10, so the local rotation of the curl bone is 10, each of the orange bone will also have its local rotation set to 10. And because it's set to local, not the world, we get first 10 degrees and 20 degrees and 30 degrees because it places the rotation uh, relative to its parent. So because the parent is already rotated 10 degrees, then the next one is 20 and so on. Now, if I go back to the curl constraint here, you can see we have the mix set on rotation. We have the mix set to 100. And for the animation of this rig, this is not touched at all. So we just leave this rotation mix to 100 throughout the entire thing. And if I go to the next constraint, the two path constraint, we have 20 of these constraints. And these constraints are, so the first one here is constraining the first orange bone and the target is the first green bone. And then the two path two is constraining the second orange bone and the target is the second green bone. And all the way down, you can see if you notice this red arrow that pops up, uh, for example, I hover here, see there's a red arrow going from the orange bone to the green bone. And you can see here, if I do this, this is how it's constrained all the way. And the way the rig works, or the way I animate with the rig is I blend between the curl pose, the orange bones, and the path pose, the green bones. And I do this by just changing the mix, the rotation mix here. So for example, right now, it's being controlled by all the orange bones. But if I set this mix to 100, the orange bones go to the same spot as where we have the green bone. And if I take this one, see again, it directly on top of the green bone. And if I just rotate this a little more, it's a little easier to see. So if I take the third one, set the mix to 100 here, see now these three bones are directly on top of the green bone. And let me undo that like so. And again, also here, options set the local for all these two path constraints. So one thing that's super important here for the constraints is the fact uh, that constraints are calculated in the order of which they're shown here in the tree. So the first one is the path constraint. And this is being calculated first. The second one is the curl and it's being calculated second.
The reason I need those two to be first is because I want those two constraints to be calculated before I actually try and blend between their positions with these two path constraints. Let's say that I set the two path rotation mix to 100 here, and I move the curl constraint down to the bottom. We'll see now nothing happens. It, it jumped back to the spot it was in before. But if I move the curl back up here, it's now being calculated and I can actually use it. So let me actually undo all this here like so. So we're back to where we started. Now, another thing to also notice if if I curl this up, uh, so we have the uh, mesh of the, the tentacle here, it's overlapping in on itself. We can control the draw of, of each vertex on the mesh. And we do this by opening the weights panel. And the tip bone here, the tentacle 20 bone, is affecting these vertices out here, the tip of the tentacle. And right now they're being rendered on top of everything else because they're at the top here. But if I take this bone and move it to the bottom, I just click it and drag it down. And deselect, you can see now part of this is being rendered behind. So, and this, this is not what I want. So I'm just gonna move this back to the top. And we're just gonna set this back to zero again. All right, so let's go back to animate mode and we'll look at the actual animation. Now, the way this is animated here at the first frame, if I go to two path constraint, you can see rotation mix for all these is set to 100 all the way down because we want to have the green bones controlling uh, the tentacle. This means I can now go and change the position here, the path constraint, and the tentacle moves along the path. I can do that. At the same time, I also want to have some manual control. So for example, if I select this bone, I go to frame 112, say here, these orange bones from here to the tip are not being controlled by the green bone, or they're not being constrained to the green bones because their mix is set to uh, zero on the rotation. If, if I go up, you can see all set to zero. And then when I get to around here, we start having uh, a mix that is non-zero. So it's 42.9. And this is because we're actually keying this value. So here at zero, here it's 100. But I can change the, the way the tentacle looks really easily by, let's say I wanted to have this tip here down closer, I can rotate it like so. And now, because I auto key on, we've set a key and now it looks a little different. We could also rotate it around like so instead. And uh, it looks a little weird, but you see it's, it's very easy con to control. So like this, all right. So the, the last thing uh, I want to talk about is how to get good deformation. And for that, I'm going to open up a second project like here. Okay, so I have two meshes here. And you'll quickly notice that the bottom one has fewer vertices than the top one. But it's not the amount of vertices that's important, it's a placement. And what you want to try and do is place your vertices or your edges as close to the root or the tip of your bones as possible. And by the edges, I mean, if my bones were up here instead, I would aim for the edges and not the vertex. So here we have this edge close to this root and then this edge close to this tip. I'm going to hide these. So in this case, I have one vertex here, the root and one the middle and one the tip for the next bone, one the root, one the middle and one the tip. If we go up to the other mesh here, we again have one the root and one the tip and then I have two in between, and I've tried to space out the vertices pretty evenly, but you don't need to be super accurate. Uh, you just need to pay a little attention to it. Okay, so let's go into animate mode. 
we see both meshes are now being deformed by the bones and none of them look that great. One way to fix that is to smooth the weights. We do this by going to the weights view and clicking smooth. I'm going to click it twice here. And you see now we get a lot better deformation. For the second one, because it has more vertices, I'm going to have to click smooth more than two times. I'm going to click it five times. So one, two, three, four, five. You see for each click I did, it got a little smoother. Now for a game, the left one would probably be okay because we do have motion and it's probably not going to take up the entire width of the screen. So you can't as easily see these jagged edges. So I'm going to undo this and let's talk about vertex transforms. So if I select this one, you see over here in the metrics view, we have 75 vertex transforms. So what is a vertex transform? If I select the weights tool and select this vertex, I go here to the bottom, you can see this vertex is being influenced by one bone. So this is one vertex transform. If I go to the second one, again, only influenced by one bone. So now we have a total of two vertex transforms. If we go to the third one, this has this has been influenced by two bones. So that's another two vertex transforms. And we have a total of four vertex transforms. And if I went through all of these and, and counted up how many uh, bones were influencing each vertex, I would end up with 75. So this is what a vertex transform is. And you want to try and keep this number as low as possible. And one way to do that is to use the prune. So let's go over here instead. And we're going to smooth this five times again. And then we're going to look at this vertex here. As you can see, this is being influenced by four bones. All right, so I have this selected. So when now when I hit prune, it's only going to prune that one vertex, I'm just going to click it, I'm going to set it to five, Weights under this threshold will be removed. And this means weights that are five or below will be removed. So I hit OK. And you see those two weights that we have here are now gone. And two weights removed. I'm going to undo that. And now we're going to try and prune the entire thing. So we prune and click OK. It says 133 weights removed. But it doesn't look that great now. So we probably prune a little too much. I'm going to undo. Click prune again, set it to two this time, hit OK. Now removed 99 weights and our vertex transform is now down to 188. So we've optimized it and now this should work a lot better at runtime in a game. OK, so I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, just leave a comment or write on our forum and I'll make sure that this project is available for everyone to download soon. All right, bye for now.